Hello, it's Amy from Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures. Got another video for you for our beginner series. And this is the last one we're going to do this month. And um, last week we did um, open S shapes. And that's something that I teach in my classes because it leads to a lot of other stuff. So here's one S shape. Of course, it's backwards to what you would normally do with an S. So let's go ahead and do, I'm going to move over here and just do an actual S shape. Sorry, it's just a double curve. So there's the S shape in the correct orientation for an S. But what we're going to do today and if you haven't seen that video, uh, you might want to go check it out on my uh, YouTube channel before c continuing on with this one. But we're just taking that double S curve and we're going to tighten one end of it into a spiral. All right, now once you come into your spiral, you can do it in several different ways. I like to leave a kind of an open circular shape in the middle and I'll show you a few variations in a minute. You can either turn this into a spiral or a scroll depending on where you go from coming into the center. You can follow back out along that S shape and there you've got a scroll shape. Okay, so that's the scroll. You're coming in, you're going back out along um, your open S shape. But to get a spiral, same deal, coming into the center, and I always like to think of it as, so we have the same shape here, as coming over the top after you come out of here. So going over the top. And of course that's just one little curve. So I'm going to do it again and get a little tighter for an actual spiral shape. You want to make sure you're leaving yourself plenty of room to come back out. And I'm going out over here. Here's right here where I can make the difference. I can come around this way for that spiral. I can go back down along that initial S shape to make more of a scroll. I'm going to come back out. And there's that spiral. I'm going to do a couple more um, just to show you how you can do the spiral, but how, how you can also change how it looks on the inside. You can come in here and then make that change in direction curvy. And that gives it a different look. I'm going to echo back around this spiral, which of course makes it look like more of a spiral by echoing around, just because I want to get away from my edge of fabric. Um, that is one good reason why you can leave yourself more room around your quilted piece, um, so you can handle it a little bit easier as you come out around the edges couple of inches of extra batting and backing really help control your quilting around the edges. You don't want to end up hanging up the edge right near your needle and getting a bunch of messes. So let me get in there good again. So this is how I do my spirals and I almost always leave kind of that little round shape I've made it much smaller here than I did with our beginning shape. Let me pull one over here. That's got a bit of the bigger uh, open area there. There's our smooth curve. Let's see if I can work against what my natural tendency is to just give you a little bit of variety. a little bit more pointy. 
here. So I have that kind of open area. But the, the basic concept is the same. Do you want to make a scroll shape by following down the stem? I'm going to do that right now. So there's a nice little scroll shape. Something fun you can do with that is to come back in here and I've actually crossed from this line to this line so I can come back out and use that scroll as a nice little base for some feathers. Stop and reposition my hand. You don't want to try to reposition your hand while you're still moving. You want to go ahead and stop. Here I'm just going to kind of echo out of this uh, feather shape. I'm not going to follow all the way around it because that's going to get me too close to my edge for right now. And I'm just trying to give you some ideas of what you can do with this. I'm going to go ahead and do some spirals um, just to show you how you can travel from one to another to give yourself a nice overall design. Stop and reposition my hands. Top right here. You just like a nice big open area right here between uh, a spiral I've done over here and this kind of feathery one. So to go back there, I'm just going to echo it around my spiral. I'm going to echo down that stem right there also. And then I'm going to come out. down here as, as a scroll on the other side just to uh, get out of that little open area instead of leaving it unquilted. Stop reposition. You can do these nice and big. You can do them smaller. You can make sure that they have very little of a stem. That kind of that scroll shape. It's more rounded. You can also have um, longer scroll shapes and play with those scrolls. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and echo along here just because we've got a bit of an open spot right here. And I'm going to ignore it for the moment, just so I can come back down here into this spiral, echo back up. Now I'm going to spiral off of there. And you see how I've filled in this little space between two spirals, and that really helps to um, from having a bunch of awkward, unquilted spaces. Don't forget to leave yourself some space for your coming back out. I didn't do that right there. When you forget to leave space, you get too tight over here. And that's that's fairly normal. It's just something to keep in mind. try to vary um, the direction of your spirals for the most part. I don't want them to get too directional. And I'm not doing a great job of keeping these all even like I would for a particular quilting project. I'm trying to show you um, plenty of variety here. I'm 
going to go ahead and stop this video. My name is Amy. I blog at Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures. You can find my blog at freemotionquiltingadventures.blogspot.com. And I hope you watch. And uh, goodbye.